Praise the Lord. It's so good to be with you again. I'm Dr. Lorna Baldonado, and I'm here with a word just for you to declare his glory. Amen? I'm going to be talking today about something that's very, very important in our lives. I'm going to be talking about being ablaze for God, being on fire for God. And so as we begin to look into the Word of God, I believe the Holy Spirit is going to touch you today. Those of you that have tuned in, that need healing in your body, I believe the power of the Holy Spirit is going to go through the airwaves today and touch you in your body, touch you in your mind, wherever you need a touch from God. The Holy Spirit is here to meet your every need. Can you give him praise? In the book of Leviticus, it talked about the lamps never going out in the temple. You know, the Lord commanded Moses to speak to the children of Israel that the lamps were never to go out. The priests were to keep those lamps burning continually. And it says that, Without the veil of the testimony of the tabernacle of the congregation shall Aaron order it, because he was a priest of God, to keep that lamp burning. And it represented today, beloved, the light of God's word burning in the temple of God. Because we are those temples today. Christ is that temple and we come into him. And so therefore, it says, know ye not that you are the temple of God. And the light of God's word is to be burning continually within us. And so it says that in Proverbs 20, 27, it says, Our spirit is the candle of the Lord. And so the Lord lights all the inward parts of our spirit. And have you ever seen in a dark room someone light a candle? Just one candle makes a little light. But if in that room, that darkened room, there are many, many candles that room begins to illuminate with the light of God's word. And this is why I've come today to minister through the Holy Spirit, that it is time to be ignited through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Listen to what Jesus spoke. He spoke this about the prophet John. He said this about John. He said, he was a burning and shining light. And they were for a season rejoicing in that light. Can you imagine? Here comes the prophet John. Now until Jesus' day, from Malachi to Matthew, there was no voice from God. God was not speaking. But here comes John. And he's a great light, a shining light. And he's what? He's called to point the way to Jesus. And so they were rejoicing in that light. And yet, there was a greater light to come, which was Jesus Christ. It said, when we think about it, it said, but I have a greater witness than that of John. This is Jesus speaking. For the work which my Father has given me, he said, I came to finish it. When the Father started creation and he started the work of God, he rested on the seventh day. And so Jesus came to finish that work. And when Jesus left, now it's up to you and I to complete the work of God, which is to spread the gospel, which is to be a light to the world, a light to your family, a light on your job. And so it said John did no miracles. John didn't do any miracles because he came for one thing. He came to point the way to Jesus. He came by water only. But uh, the apostle, John, said something so powerful about Jesus. He said, this is he that came by water and blood, even Jesus Christ. Not by water only, but by water and blood. What did that blood represent? It represented the Spirit of God. Because the greater witness was the anointing of the Spirit. It was that word with the Holy Spirit's anointing. 
And the water was that word that Jesus spoke, but it was anointed by the Holy Spirit. And it's time, beloved. It is time that we begin to walk in that light of the word of God. You know, when you look out at this world and you see a darkened world and you see people hurting, you see people without hope, you see people are, which are discouraged, and maybe you're one of those today that are discouraged. But I'm here to tell you when you begin to get the passion and the zeal of Christ and the light of God's word burning inside of you, it's just like having a living water fountain that will well up in your spirit. And it will not only refresh others and overflow to others, but it will be a living fountain refreshing you. And so that's why I'm here today to say that it's time, beloved, that we begin to stir up those gifts and be that light that God has called us to be. He said, know ye not that we are the temples of God and he is that light within us. And so as we continue to look into the word of the Lord today, we are going to see some amazing things. You know, Jesus came to baptize us with the Holy Ghost and fire. You say, what was that? That Holy Ghost and fire, that was the fire of the word. And the Holy Spirit, so that we could be ignited and have passion for that word. You know, nobody likes to be around somebody who's just dead in their spirit. Everybody likes to be around somebody who is just alive with God. You know the difference, because sometimes you can be around somebody and they just have negative things to say. But when you're around somebody that's on fire for Jesus Christ, they will just ignite your spirit. And it's a time, because the enemy has come to steal, kill, and destroy. He's come to take your joy and to steal that word. And so it's up to you and I. That's why the Word of God is so important. It is so important to keep ourselves filled with God's Word. And God's Word is amazing. He loved the Word so much that he said, I esteem my Word above my name. He even called himself the Word of God. Can you imagine that? Jesus said, I am the Word. When we get that Word in, in us, we have to truly understand. We don't just have a spirit, we are a spirit. And so we need to be ignited in this, this hour because the greatest power of the Holy Spirit is yet to be unleashed in this earth. And even though it looks like the enemy has taken over in many parts and the world has grown dark, I have a word, I have a prophetic word for you today that the light of the moon shall be as the light of the sun seven times brighter because God is going to pour out his spirit and he's calling you, beloved, to ignite and cause that word to be a living light within you wherever you go that you bring that light of Jesus Christ to this world, to your family, to your children. You want to see your children come in? Then when you have a passion for Jesus Christ and you love the Lord, we talk about God's love, but when we love the Lord, we want to be full of, of his spirit. So it says, I indeed baptize you with water and to repentance. This is John the prophet speaking. But he said, He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. So if we have been baptized and filled with the Holy Spirit of God, then we're without excuse. But what happens? Things in life can come and situations can come. Because the enemy's job is to bring discouragement. He comes to wear down the saints. But we stay connected to the word. Stay connected to the anointing. That word will do will be maha. I'm speaking to somebody today that you have grown discouraged. You may be in the ministry, or you may be a mother or father, but the Lord is speaking directly to you today that God has sent me here to tell you that it's time to get on fire once again for the Lord. He's telling me that you that are listening were once on fire, but that began, the flame began to go out, just like the lamp went out one time in the temple. 
But today, Jesus Christ, through his word, is coming to light us once again, to cause the flame of God to come forth from his holy temple, because we are the temple, with many stones in that temple, a building not made with hands, but by the Spirit, that we can come together in unity, even like they did in the book of Acts, that we can be those temples where the glory of God, it says in Ezekiel, is going to flow from that temple. And we want it to flow from us. Amen? God is so good. You know, God even hates lukewarm. He said in Revelation 3, he said unto the angel of the church of the Laodicean, he was talking about a church that felt like they were rich, felt like they had everything, and yet they were lukewarm. It says, in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of self, more than lovers of God. But that's not you and I, because the Bible says we're a chosen generation. We are a royal priesthood. So it is time, and I believe that God has a people, that his spirit is being poured out every time you come to hear the word of God. There is a spirit of the living God being poured out through these airwaves today. It will go right into these airwaves, right to where you're sitting, right to where you are. And it will begin to speak to you because the Holy Spirit speaks. The Holy Spirit brings forth his, the presence of Jesus Christ. The job of the Holy Spirit is to glorify and magnify Jesus. Can you give him praise? He said, I know thy works, thou art neither cold nor hot. He said, you're neither. You're neither cold nor you're neither hot. You're just lukewarm. And that's the way some believers are today. They were once on fire for God. And so many things came in that discouraged them. But he said, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. So he came today because he loves us so much. He is not going to leave his church in that condition. And he's going to use you, beloved. You know, fires tend to go out. If they're left unattended, any fire will go out. So it's time to fan that flame. And you say, well, how am I going to do it? Get connected. You know, the Bible says we're to serve God joyfully. Get up. Sometimes the Holy Spirit just reminds me in the midst of a situation, in the midst of whatever I might be going through or a family member might be going through, he says rejoice. And again I say rejoice. That we are to serve God joyfully with a fervent spirit. Why? Because God's word is truth. And God's word can turn any situation around. You may be in a situation where you feel like, wow, I'm sitting in the ashes of my life. And you're saying, prophet, to be encouraged and to be stirred up. How can I do this? Because God said, I will give you beauty for ashes. And you know, when that prophecy came, Isaiah the prophet began to prophesy of the Lord. He said, the spirit of the Lord is upon him. And he said that he came to heal the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, which was that year of Jubilee. And we are here today because we are walking in that year of Jubilee. When Jesus got up and began to quote in Luke 4, 18, he said, today it has been established. Today that word has been fulfilled that was prophesied way back through the mouth of the prophet Isaiah. We are living in that time, beloved. We are living in that time that we can draw from his word. When you begin to draw from his word, you know that it's living and it will come alive. When you open up your spirit to receive, that word is living and it will begin to be living in you. Listen to this beautiful, powerful statement. I love the book of Isaiah because the prophet Isaiah spoke. He said this, There's none that call on the name of the Lord. 
There are none that stir themselves to take hold of him. But you and I are those that are being stirred by the mighty promises of God. We've been given the gift of the Holy Spirit. And so what are we going to do with that gift? Sometimes I talk to people, I say, they say, I'm filled with the Holy Spirit. Well, when we're filled with the Holy Spirit, we should be praising God. We should be worshiping God. A sign of being filled with the Holy Spirit is that you can worship him no matter what you're going through. Because it's no more you, but it's the power of the joy of the Holy Spirit that can begin to worship the Lord in the midst of those things that you are going through. And God can turn any situation around. But what happens when you begin to rejoice and you begin to praise God, then the enemies are rolled back. The enemies that are attacking you have to go when you begin to praise God. This is why it was so important. Wars were won when they sent the praisers first. We are to serve God joyfully, to think what all he has done for us. Do we really know what all he did for us on the cross? That he came not only to save man, forgive us of our sins, but he came to create a new creation. He came to make us kings and priests. He came to establish his word in us. He came that, so that we might be that city on a hill, so that we might be the light of this world, not just looking at darkness, not just looking at evil, but beginning to be that light. When I talk about the light, I'm talking about it changes your speech. It changes your thinking. <laughs> it lights your spirit first. And then the Holy Spirit begins to talk. The Holy Spirit begins to minister to your spirit. And as you begin to get the revelation of what God wants you to speak, that everywhere you go, there should be a light. Everywhere you go, there should be an overflow of the Holy Spirit because that word is so powerful. Can you give him praise today? Now, there is a situation that is so beautiful that I love. I love the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul just has always encouraged me because I've watched his life. I've read about the Apostle Paul so many times, and every time the Holy Spirit gives me something new. But Apostle Paul, he was a gift to Timothy. Timothy was his spiritual son. And he says to Timothy, My dearly beloved son in the Lord, grace, mercy, and truth. And he begins to speak to Timothy. Because Timothy was so blessed because his mother and his grandmother knew the Lord, and I'm sure they prayed for Timothy since he was a little boy. And so their prayers brought forth a gift, a mighty gift of Apostle Paul. And Apostle Paul, he said, I have remembrance of thee. I'm praying for you day and night. And he said, I greatly desire to see thee, being mindful of tears that I may be filled with joy. And so he's talking to his spiritual son, Timothy. And Timothy sometimes, I believe when he was talking to him, I don't believe that Apostle Paul just said these words, but I believe there was a situation in Timothy's life. And I believe because there was much persecution and many things going on. And yet the Apostle Paul had a word for Timothy. And that word is the same word that I give to you today. And this is what he said to Timothy. It is very powerful. He said, wherefore I put thee in remembrance. Sometimes we just have to be reminded of who we are. We have to be reminded of who God is and who we are in Christ. We have to be reminded that God is a good God and that he's faithful. He said that you stir up the gift of God which is in you by the putting on of my hands. You see, the gift was already in Timothy. Apostle Paul had trained him. He had equipped him. He had given him the word. And yet he had to stir it up. 
You may have the word in you. Maybe you've been listening to the word for years. But it's time to allow the Holy Spirit to stir us once again. And you know how the Holy Spirit stirs us? He takes us into the prayer room. He takes us into that mighty prayer room. And as we begin to praise God, there's a stirring in your spirit. There is a fire that will be ignited in you. And it comes through the fire of the Holy Spirit. So he's speaking these things to Timothy. And Paul went on to say, this is why I know that Timothy was going through some challenges. Because Apostle Paul wouldn't have said this, but he said to Timothy, God hasn't given you the spirit of fear, Timothy. But he's given you power and love and a sound mind. And he said, be therefore not ashamed of the testimony of the Lord, nor the fact that Apostle Paul was in prison. But in it, what was he saying? Rise up, Timothy. Rise up. Because he has saved us and he has called us with a holy calling for his own purpose and grace. Serving the Lord is not always an easy road. Sometimes you go through difficult situations. But you know what? It's the most blessed life that you can ever have. It's the most blessed, blessed life. And if you're listening today and you've never received Jesus, you can receive him today by saying, Jesus, come into my heart and take over my life. Forgive me of my sins. Wash me in your blood. And forgive me. I receive your life, Jesus. And you're born again. And maybe you're there. Maybe you're struggling in your life. But today is time to say, I'm going to get a new passion. I'm going to have the Holy Spirit stir me up. Get in your word. Because there's something about the word of the Lord that the Holy Spirit will begin to minister to you and ignite you. My prayer for you today is that you will Understand that God is calling you to be zealous, to be with passion. I prophesy to you by the Spirit of the living God that we are not going down in defeat. This is the church's brightest hour. And that the glory of the Lord is going to cover the earth. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord is going to cover the earth as the waters cover the sea. And those waters, beloved, are going to come forth from a people and my prayer for you today is that you will be ignited through the power of the Holy Spirit, that you will begin to pray as never before, that you will begin to get in the Word as never before, that you will stay under the anointing of the Word of the Lord, and it will cause you to become strong in the Lord and the power of His might. Can you give Him praise? Thank you, Jesus. Fan that flame. Don't let the enemy win, but fan that flame and rise up. Stay under the anointed covering. Stay listening to the word. You know the word when it comes forth from the anointing of God, it, boom, it'll go right in your spirit. And it will cause you to rise up. When he said in Isaiah 60, he said, Arise and shine for the glory of God has risen upon you. And I believe that just like it happened when the prophet spoke it, I believe it's happening today. And I believe that glory of God is rising upon us as we come into his presence and serve him with a joyful heart, being stirred by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. I thank you for being with me today, and I will see you next time. I'm praying for you. If you have prayer requests, please send them. You can send them to Innis Glory Ministries International, P.O. Box 2523, Downey, California, 90242. And you could tuck in your love offerings. Send them also to Cross TV. We're here for you because you are important to us. We love you. God bless you. See you next time to declare his glory.